So being a child of the 60s, I read or started to read comics in the late 1950s and read throughout the early 60s. I was close, very close to the golden age of comics and started reading comic books at the very beginning of the Silver Age of Comics. So I always had a very strong interest in the Golden Age heroes. And, you know, I've read up about them. And during the 1960s, I got as many of the annuals and anything else that might be publishing stuff that was a little bit older. But unfortunately, most of them just went to the early 60s or the uh, late 50s. And you really didn't get too much from the Golden Age. So, but that interest has continued, you know, into my adulthood, and I'm still have an interest in golden age comic book heroes. So I started searching around saying there must be some compilation of golden age uh, comic books, especially for those particular comic books that may no longer be subject to copyright. And I did find some websites that do have them, but I found two that I want to show you today because I think they were especially good. And the second one I think is just terrific. So stay tuned for this video. Anachronic. Hey, comic book guys and gals, I'm Joe and welcome to Anachronic Comics. As I mentioned, being a child of the 60s, I was very close to the golden age of comics and was interested in those heroes. So, you know, when um, Flash, the Flash of Two Worlds came out and when the Justice League and the Justice Society would meet up every year for a uh, Earth One and Earth Two event. Those particular comic books are some of my favorites and I still have them in my collection. But there were a lot of other comic books, a lot of other history of superheroes and non-superheroes like Westerns and uh, uh, more comic books and so forth from the uh, Golden Age that I would like to be able to research and read. And so when I went through um, the websites and looking at different websites and searching for them, I found two that I thought were pretty good. All right. And the first one, let me bring them up for you and let's go take a look at them. So the first one is... So the first one is the digitalcomicmuseum.com. So let's take a look at this and see what we've got here. And you see, you can be a guest. You can log in if you're registered. And we'll talk about registration in a second. It's free. Um, and you register right here. So let's take a look at it quickly, at least this portion of it. So if you take a look at it, you'll see that in alphabetical order, different publishers are listed here. All right, Avon Comics, for example, Canadian Comics. That would be an interesting one to take a look at. This Charlton, which we know about, uh, Columbia Comics, Let's see, there's Dell, Dell Comics, which we know about as well. Uh, Fawcett, that'll be an interesting one to take a look at. And Fox Feature Syndicate, which I am going to get to in a second. So let's take a look <clears throat> and see what we can do. So as a um, guest, you can bring up comic books. Let's take a look at Fox Feature Syndicate and see what we can find here. So when we get to Fox Feature Syndicate's site, you see that you've got a number of comic books, including Blue Beetle. This is Blue Beetle from um, the uh, 1944 through August 1950. There were 40 issues published. Right? And so you can take a look and see what the latest download is. It says it's got 41 files available. So if we click on Blue Beetle, you can either click on here or here. It brings us to what's available. As you can see, it's quite a range of comic books. Looks like it's from number one all the way to number 60. All right. And it's got the uploader. All right, because as a, as a member, you can also upload comic books. All right. Tells you when it was uploaded, the file side, how many times it's been downloaded, and if there's comments, because you could add comics, it's got it right here. So let's take a look at Blue Beetle number one. And you click on that, and sure enough, it comes up. Okay. All the information about it, the origin, synopsis, all the stories in Blue Beetle number one, right here as well. Okay. So, you can download it 
if you are a member. If not, you hit preview and it brings it up on your screen. Okay. Now, you can't scroll. Pages are done down here by clicking on the arrow that's there. Right. So you can click on it inside front cover. Easy. Right. First page of the story, The Blue Beetle. It's an expensive comic book, incidentally. Okay, so let's go back to the home page and see how you can register. So you click here, you hit register at the top. You see I'm already a member, so my uh, name and password is already in there. But if you had to register, you read through the registration agreement, you say you accept, right? Then you fill in your information, say you're not a robot, right? And then you uh, register and then you can download and what have you. I'm already a member, so let me just hit the login. Okay, now when you hit the login, you go straight to the chat room and you see there are plenty of chats here and there are a lot of people that are involved with the chat. Um, you see the downloads here, you click on that. You can go back here. So let's try to make our way back to that Blue Beetle comic book. back to Fox, right? There's Fawcett, Fox Feature Syndicate. All right, so let's click on that. Uh, Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle number one. Okay, now we're back. Now, if you take a look, I can comment. I can still preview, but now I can download, all right? So if we um, hit the download button, see down at the bottom, it's downloading right here. And let's wait for the download. Okay, so the download has, has finished. It was a pretty big download. Um, so let's take a look and see what we got. Let's go to the, bring up our downloads. And we got Blue Beetle, all right? And let me uh, bring it over here so we can see it. Let's expand it. And here you have the comic book, a little bit of writing. So this looks like it was like this guy had a really, really uh, good scanner. Look how nice these colors are. And when you download it, you can see now you can kind of see the whole page. Um, it just is better in my view to read it. You can see it this way, you get the better, you get more kind of the feel as if it was paper. Um, and now you can click on your mouse as well and go to page to page. Here's the inside uh, front cover. Um, here's the first page, the Blue Beetle, the very first appearance, all right? Blue Epidemic. Here, like he was a sports guy, All right? And so now this comic book is on my hard drive. And frankly, I've started uh, for some of these that I really am interested in, I've started a digital collection, All right? And so I've got these in a folder on my hard drive, okay? Um, and just kind of a, just a cool thing, a cool thing to have in my view, anyway. Right, and you can see, if you look over here, you can see I have Captain Marvel compilations. I have another Blue Beetle here. I have a Captain uh, Adam here. So, I mean, it's just like a terrific, uh, terrific uh, thing to have. So, that's the first one. All right, again, it's called digitalcomicmuseum.com. And it's a good website and some good stuff there. But the second one I've got is so much better in my view, because not only is it comics, but it has pulp magazines, movies, radio uh, stories. So let's take a look at, um, at that one. Let me bring that one up. This one is called Comic Book Plus. Now, Comic Book Plus is also free to join. All right. And again, you have to join it to be able to download things and what have you. Um, unlike the uh, digital 
comicmuseum.com. They do ask you for donations or to subscribe to help support it. Now, I think the reason for that is that it's really a tremendous site. I'm on the comic book site right now. You see, it says comic book compilations, superhero compilations. And it's got 41,687 41, um, uh, books in total with 49 new books here. You go through categories, collections, newsstands, etc. Interesting though, look, you can see it has a forum, but look at this. Comic books has comic strips, fanzines, which we'll take a look at in, in a little while, non-English books, British story papers, old time radio, and that's a cool one. All right, pulp fiction, pamphlets, uh, go down, newspapers, vintage movies and TV. So it's pretty cool, all right? But let's take a look at this. Now, again, I am already registered for this, so we won't go through. You see this Anachronic Comics here at the top. So I've already registered for this. I've gone through it. And if you go through this, you see it's set up a little bit differently. In and I like to go to the compilation stage. All right, instead of going to the comic books, which is set up similarly to the uh, Digital Comic Museum, I go to the compilation, superhero compilations because it gives me what they have for each superhero. So for Amazing Man Comics, you can see it has four issues, all right? For the uh, Blue Beetle, look, it has 13 issues. That's why I like both of them, because some of them have more issues than others, okay? And here we can see Bullet Man, all right? They have 12 issues of Bullet Man. For Captain Marvel, they have 13 issues, all right? Captain Marvel Archives, Captain Marvel Jr. Archives, right? Daredevil Archives, Eagle and Buddy, The Flame, Green Mask, all right, Heap, Hydro Man, Minute Man, nice, <laughs> Samson and David, Spy Smasher, etc. So let's go back up here. Let's try one out. Uh, let's do, why don't we go to Captain Marvel, all right? So they give you a nice little history here from Captain Marvel, all right? main foe, who he's assisted by. He now appears in DC Comics, who holds the trademarks for the names Shazam and Billy Batson. However, his Marvel Comics owns the trademark for the name Captain Marvel. For a different character, DC Comics renamed the comic book uh, Shazam. We know that already. So let's take a look and let's go and see what the issues are. All right. So here, again, in a similar way, they are listed, right, with the pages for each one. And um, again, the date that was added, the size, how many views they've had, and how many downloads they've had. So similar type of information. So let's um, should we do Wiz, or let's do Captain Marvel. All right, so Captain Marvel compilation number one. All right, and here's the cover for it. Uh, Bullet Man, what have you. And again, some of the same information that's here, all right? You can add a comment once you turn it in. And you can also look at this page three, but you can go previous, there's a cover. So you can go to each one of these like this and just read it here. And if you don't want to uh, sign in, you don't have to. And here again, you go through basically by hitting the next button, the next button, and you can do it at the top too. Next, next, etc. Now, if you download it, let's download this file, okay? Just like I did with the Digital Comic Museum, Comic Book Plus, you can download it and you can open it up as a download. Let's see if it's going. Yep, okay, so let's open this one up. And there it is. Great, all right. I think I'll skip it for now. Now, again, just like it was for the Digital Museum, Digital Comic Museum, you see that when you download it, you see the entire page. It's 100 pages. America's Greatest Comics, number one. Captain Marvel and the Ghost of the Deep. All right, and there's the comic book. Pretty good scan, not bad. You can read it, you can read the words very easily there here, All right? So I'm gonna put this one in my digital collection. There's a chubby guy. <laughs> I love these drawings and stuff like that. And Captain Marvel is pretty cool, all right? Uh, America's Greatest Comics, number two. So this particular download has a number of American Greatest Comics, and I guess it'll go into the Wiz um, with the other downloads as well. So, pretty cool. So you download it, now it's, I've got it on my hard drive, 
and it's part of my collection. Now let's see if I can get back to that home page. Okay, let's go back up here now. As I mentioned to you, it has uh, movies and TV, old time radio um, as well. Let's take a quick look at the radio, though I'm not gonna download anything right now. But you see here, it has categories for the radio as well. So, and it's got some of them right here. A case for Dr. Morell. We've got Abbott and Costello, 46 episodes. Not bad, all right? Another one, the, their children's show, Champion, The Adventures of Frank Race. Horatio Hornblower used to read those books. Cool books. It's like Star Trek, but with, uh, you know, 1800s uh, uh, tall ships. It's pretty good, all right? Philip Marlowe, the detective, Sam Spade, Superman. So, oh man, I didn't realize Superman was here. Um, let's see, 1163 episodes. Let's see if we just can get one. It says created by Jerry Siegel, the whole bit. Um, this is 27 minutes. Let's see if I could download it real quick and we can listen to a little bit of it. Or let's just listen to it a little bit of it now. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. <laughs> The Adventures of Superman. When the planet Krypton, home of a race of supermen, exploded into dust, the sole survivor was an infant boy who had been shot to Earth in a sealed rocket. Today, that boy, grown to manhood, is known as Superman, sworn enemy of the forces of evil. To aid him in his never-ending fight for truth and justice, he masquerades as Clark Kent, crime reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. Pretty cool, huh? Let's see if I can uh, go back. I'm back. Um, yeah, I don't want to set up professional audio. Set. So <laughs> this radio part is pretty cool. I'm going to listen to the rest of that later on. So now, but I do want to show you one other part of this for sure, the fanzines. Now, you know that I am a big um, Roy Thomas fan, and it goes way back into the 1960s. If you saw uh, the video that um, I put up where I went with um, Matt Woods to Providence, Rhode Island to a Comic-Con, and met Roy for the first time. And I showed him letters that I had written to him, um, his response and a response from his mother uh, back in the early 60s. And so at that time, I knew him through his editing of uh, the original Alter Ego fanzine. Uh, he took over from Jerry Vale, Jerry Bale and did numbers seven, eight, nine, and 10, those four. I had them all. The only one I have left is 10. The other one somehow didn't survive. But the uh, let's find it right here. Number seven. Here it is. And it's interesting. He still has the copyright on it, but he allowed them to um, uh, to upload them so people can see them, which was really cool of them to do. So number seven right here. This cover is said to be it's by Bill Joe White. But here, um, this sometimes is considered the first appearance of Black Adam in the Silver Age. All right. So Bill Joe did a great job on this cover, the side of the Marvel family. All right. I'm not going to download. I already downloaded this. I really have it. All right. So if you look at it, we go to the next page. You see the contents. Front covers by Bill Joe White. You have editorial, um, a story on Solomon Grundy. Walter and Captain Ego, which was a um, superhero, um, and I have I have a story about that um, in, on that uh, Roy Thomas video as well. Uh, and we go through it, and you can see here that One Man's Family is written by Roy Thomas, and that's the cover story that's there. You know, and if you go through, you see kind of some of the rest of the stuff that they have. Let's take a look at a couple more pages. All right, the Altered Ego by Roy Thomas. That's a self-portrait that he had. All right. We always just say bestest. Okay. Next page. The end of Solomon Grande. Little Joe White. Clearly had an artistic bent to himself. All right. Ron Foss, who did a lot of that. Ala Kubert. <laughs> Look at him. That's pretty cool. So 
comic book plus uh, to me because of the breadth of what they offer um i think it's a great site and maybe a better site but if you do comic book plus and digital comic book museum and you're looking just for the superhero comic books you will get more of them by looking at both of them and again you can join them for free you can download and you can make up your own digital library uh, if you find any others there are other sites there are other things you can do with respect to that and i've looked at a bunch of them but for me because of two reasons the breadth of what they do and the fact that they're free these are the two sites that i recommend to you to take a look at for golden age comic books that you can read and or download and have make your own digital library so I hope you enjoyed this video and you found some of the information useful. And if you did, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps with the algorithms. And before we go, I want to remind you to take a look at last Friday's uh, comic book crowd video, especially the last half of it, where the entire crowd uh, on a, a kind of a dare by Master Plaster um, did a sketch of something or other, a superhero, a person, what have you. And uh, we have, we're having a contest as to which one of the sketches you like the best. If you watch the video, it'll tell you how you can vote. And on our next comic book crowd uh, video, we're going to pick a winner who's going to get a bunch of comics and mystery box uh, that we're going to put in there. And there'll definitely be some Silver Age comic books in there. Uh, from my collection. So be well, and I'll see you soon.